ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثه بدعه and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعه ضلاله every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray وكل ضلاله في النار every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire ثم ما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as we highlighted a couple weeks ago the importance of the day of Jum'ah and the Jum'ah prayer and attending the masjid on Jum'ah early and the likes of those matters, there are some more etiquettes dealing with the masjid in general, the congregational prayer, the salah and jama'ah, and just in general. So let these all be a reminder for us. As Allah said, وَلَكَ فِي النَّفِكَةَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind one another of things because it will benefit the believers. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, he mentions that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا أُقِيمَتَ الصَّلَاةِ فَلَا تَأْتُوهَا وَأَنْتُمْ تَسْعَوْنَ وَأَتُوهَا تَمْشُونَ وَعَلَيْكُمُ السَّكِينَةِ فَمَا أَذْرَقْتُمْ فَصَلُّوا وَمَا فَاتُكُمْ فَأَتِمُوا This hadith which is sahih in the sunnah of Ibn Majah, We're taught about the etiquette of coming to prayer. The Prophet ﷺ said, when the iqamah is called for the prayer, or you know that the prayer is coming, or the time for Jum'ah is starting, whatever it may be, do not come to it running, but come walking. Come with peace and calmness and tranquility. Whatever you catch of the prayer, you complete and you make it. Uh, you, you pray it. And whatever you missed of the prayer, then you make it up. This is... يعني الأريكت that many of us unfortunately sometimes are lacking. Yes, the urgency to come to the salah, to make it, to catch the rakah, but sometimes it's to the disruption of your own self and your brothers that are already praying, the noise, the heavy breathing, the coming and the key shaking. So this is an etiquette we remind ourselves with. As we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, bathing and wearing good clothing, having good fragrance on Jum'ah, This is, the ghusl is a sunnah. It's mustahab. It's likened to the majority of the ulama. Some of them consider it obligatory to take a bath on Jum'ah. For anyone who attends, the male or the female, the child or the traveler, with the intention of going to Jum'ah, it is best for them to take a ghusl or to take a bath. It was narrated from Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, that he mentioned that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنَ اخْتَسَلَ يَوْمَ الْجُمْعَةِ فأحسن غسله وطهر وتطهر فأحسن طهوره ولبس من أحسن ثيابه ومس ما كتب الله له من طيب أهله ثم أتى الجمعة ولم يل ولم يلغ ولم يفرق بين اثنين غفر له غفر له ما بينه ما بين الجمعة ما بينه وبين الجمعة الأخرى رواه ابن ماجه The Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith which is sahih, when one of you gets to Friday, whoever takes a bath on that Friday and does it well, and purifies himself and does it well, and wears good clothing, 
the best of the clothing that they have and puts on some fragrances, some ithar, or some good smells, some musk from what Allah has decreed for him of his family, from his family, that he comes to the masjid and he does not engage in idle talk and he doesn't separate between two people. He will be forgiven for his sins between that Friday, that Jum'ah, and the previous Jum'ah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is a principle not just on Jum'ah, but at all times, to come to the masjid in proper clothing, in the best of your clothes, smelling good and doing well. Allah, He says, Ya Bani Adam, خُذُوا زِينَتَكُمْ عِنْدَ كُلِّ مَسْجِدْ Allah, He says, what means, O children of Adam, take your adornment by wearing clean clothes, the best of your clothes, while praying and while going around the Kaaba and while doing all of these things, any time you attend the masjid, it should be in the best of clothes. And you should have a good sense so that you don't offend the people. Here we mention something that يعني, we, we failed to mention, I failed to mention a couple of weeks ago, that you should be cautious of these t-shirts that some of us wear nowadays that have all these drawings and colors to them. Because they are distracting and things that distracted the Prophet ﷺ like this and Salah, he had removed from in front of his face. He had them removed. And some of them taken apart. So be mindful that when we come to the masajid to pray, we're looking out for ourselves, we're also looking out for our brothers and sisters who may pray behind us. So they're not distracted in their prayer. عن جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أكل من هذه البقلة الثوم وقال مرة من أكل البصل والثوم والكراث فلا يقربن مسجدنا فإن الملائكة تتأذى مما يتأذى منه بن آدم رواه مسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever eats from this offensive plant it was garlic and sometimes he said whoever eats onion or garlic or leek they should not approach our masjid, for the angels are harmed by the same things that harm the children of Adam. So again, the one coming to the masjid should have a good smell, not a smell of cigarette smoke, not a smell of garlic or, or onion that is raw that you've ate and that leaks out of the pores and sweats out of the pores when you sweat. But you should come with the best of sense. So be mindful of this, my brothers and sisters in Islam. When we come to the masjid, some of us use the restroom. And there's an etiquette for using the restroom. And yet, even though we were it, and there's signs on the doors, and we encourage the brothers to stick to the sunnah of the Prophet and what we know is best, you'll find those who use the restroom without sitting down from the men. Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, she said, مَنْ حَدَّثَكُمْ أَنَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بَالْ قَائِمًا فَلَا تُصَدِّقُوهُ مَا كَانَ يَقُولَ إِلَّا جَالِسًا this hadith which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Nisa'i, Aisha, the mother of the believers, may Allah be pleased with her. She said that whoever tells you that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, urinated while standing up, do not believe him. He only urinated when he was sitting down. And this is the high, high point of which you should do. Now, if you have a place which is filthy, you're going out to the stores or you're at a restaurant or something and you have to stand, you go and you just be careful to not get urine on your clothing. And it's not forbidden in those cases. But in the masajid especially, we should be using the restroom sitting down so we keep the bathrooms clean. Because this is the way the Muslim bathroom should be. So use the restroom for the men, the brothers, while sitting down. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu ma'al he said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, passed by two graves and he said, وسلم, he said, or he was said that he walked by two graves and he said they are being punished. But they're not being punished because of something major. It was something they could have easily avoided. One of them was heedless about getting urine on his clothing when he used to use the restroom. And this is the common norm with the urinals and what we see in the bathrooms nowadays, especially in this country. <clears throat> but they were heedless to prevent urine from getting on their clothes. And the other one used to walk spreading namima, telling malicious lies, spreading false speech. <clears throat> These are sources of punishment in the grave. وَرَوَ الْحَاكِمْ أَمَّا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى 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 اللَّ
Al-Hakim, he narrated in an authentic hadith that the Messenger of Allah he said, urination is the main cause of punishment in the grave. Meaning, not being careful to keep yourself free from any urine getting on your clothing. So be mindful of this etiquette, not just in your homes, but in the masajid. So the masajid can be clean, and those who use it after you can have a clean place to also يعني, use the restroom. Although we mentioned it previously about the sutra, especially on the days of Jum'ah or on other days, the sutra, the barrier you place yourself before you pray, in front of where you're praying. The Prophet وسلم, he said in the authentic report, which is sahih in the narrations of Ibn Khuzama, he said, لا تصلوا إلا 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 sutra. He said, do not pray except to a sutra. So in this narration, there was a command that when you pray, that there should be a barrier in front of you. A person, a stick that has some height, these uh, boards that you see, the wall, a chair, something, so that those who need to pass in front of you can pass in front of that sutra and there's no harm on them. Likewise, we mentioned because the brother had asked regarding it, and we said we would mention it. When you're praying in jama'ah, the sutra of the imam is the sutra for the rest of the people. So if somebody were to lose his wudu in the middle of salah, in the rows behind the imam, and they had to leave the salah and cut in front of those praying behind the imam, it does not cut off the prayer. Because the sutra of the imam is the sutra of the people. وعن أبو جهين بن الحارث رضي الله عنه he mentioned that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, لَوْ يَعْمُ النَّارُ بَيْنَ يَدِ الْمُصَلِّ مَاذَا عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْإِثْمِ لَكَانَ أَنْ يَقِفَ أَرْبَعِينَ خَيْرًا لَهُ مِنْ أَنْ يَمَرُّ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مُتَّفْقٌ عَلَيْهِ In the authentic hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, if the person pass, who passes in front of another person in prayer knew the sin they would get, they would wait for me. And the narrator said, I don't know if what was mentioned was 40 years or 40 months or 40 weeks or 40 days or 40 hours or 40 minutes. We don't even want to wait 40 seconds. If you knew the sin of passing in front of somebody praying, you would wait as long as you needed to just to not get that sin. This is the importance of the sutra because if you walk in front of the sutra, then you're fine. And then you can pass. Tahiyyat al-Masjid. Uh, other days, not just on Jum'ah, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَكُمْ الْمَسْجِدْ فَلْيَرْكَعْ رَكْعَتَيْنِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَجْلِسْ The Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, if you come to the masjid, pray two rak'ahs before you sit down. This is at any time. Even if you come in the forbidden times, the ulama said that you pray those two rak'ahs, or you stay standing and you don't sit. If you don't want to pray it at that certain time. And on Jum'ah, it's especially stressed. And we mentioned the narration, we'll mention it again, because if we're not going to stick to the sunnah, then who will? If we're not going to stick to the sunnah, then we're going to see يعني, Islam, we're going to see it يعني, falter through the hands of the people. Instead of spreading, instead of the sunnah of the best of mankind spreading. Sulaik, one of the companions, Sulaik al ghatafani he came in when the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was giving the khutbah himself. And he sat down and he told him, Ya Sulaik, he said, O Sulaik, Qum wa Get up and stand up and pray to Raqqas but make them short. Thumma qal, Ida jaa ahadakum al-yom al-jum'ah wal-imam yakhtub falyarka rak'atayn wal yatajawwas fihima. Ruwahu Muslim. This hadith in Sahih Muslim. Yet some will still go and try to, يعني, يجادلوا, يعني, to argue this because of a madhab or a position they were taught. We're here to follow Rasulullah When the evidence comes, you take it. This is why Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed, may Allah have mercy on all of them, they all said, إِذَا صَحَّ الْحَدِيثَ هُوَ مَذْهَبِ When the hadith is sahih, that is my madhab. Even if I said something prior, that was, it was in opposition. They weren't arrogant to have made mistakes in their rulings. They accepted the Sahih Hadith. You have this one in Sahih Muslim, where Sulaiki came down in Jum'ah, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was giving the khutbah himself, and he told them, stand up and pray to Raqqa's but make them brief. And then he narrated, if any of you comes on Jum'ah and the Imam is giving the khutbah, then pray to Raqqa's before you sit down. If you come and you sit, and you remember, stand up and pray to Raqqa's. 
This is the sunnah of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what he commanded the companions to do. So we should be willing to follow. When we're in the masajid, sometimes we do things that bother the people. Sometimes it's other acts of ibadah, but it doesn't let others focus on their acts of ibadah. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or Afwan Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he retired to his masjid, from, from the masjid, he went home. And he heard the people reciting Quran in a loud voice. So he said, so it was said in the hadith, فَكَشَفَ السِّفْرَ وَقَالَ أَلَا إِنَّ كُلُّكُمْ مُنَاجٍ رَبَّهُمْ فَلَا يُؤْذِيَنَّ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا وَلَا يَرْفَعَ بَعْضُكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ فِي الْقِرَاءَةِ أَوْ قَالَ فِي الصَّلَاةِ This hadith with Shaykh Al-Adani, he authenticated. You find it in the Sunan of Abi Dawood, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi hearing the people from his home. Reciting Quran out loud, out loud, he peeled back the curtain from his home to look into the masjid. He removed it and he said, Lo, every one of you is calling his Lord quietly. One should not trouble the other and one should not raise their voice in recitation or in prayer over the voice of the other. Anything we do. Now this is for ibadah, the Prophet was saying, don't raise your voice in salah, don't raise your voice in Quran if you're in the masjid so you don't disturb the others doing other acts of ibadah. So what about us who sometimes, and I've been guilty of it and I advise myself first, who are talking about the dunya. When other people are praying, when other people are making dhikr, when other people are making dua. On Jum'ah, when salah is done, you have some making their dhikr, praying their, their, their sunnah prayers after Jum'ah. And it's loud, it's like a market, like a flea market. How loud it gets. There's two doors. If we really want to implement the sunnah, have your conversations outside so those who are worshipping Allah can focus. Imagine this hadith was of those who were loud because of other acts of ibadah, reading the Quran, reading the book of Allah, praying. But the Prophet ﷺ told them, do not put your voices over the others. Respect your brothers and sisters who are in their acts of ibadah. Straightening the rows, closing the gaps for all prayers. Again, we go back to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَقِيمُ الصُّفُوحِ وَحَذُرُ بَيْنَ الْمَنَاكِبِ وَصُدُّ الْخَلَلِ وَلِينُوا بِأَيْدِي إِخْوَانِكُمْ لَمْ يَقُلْ لَمْ يَقُلْ عِيسَى بِأَيْدِي إِخْوَانِكُمْ وَلَا تَذَرُوا فُرَاجَةٍ لِلشَّيْطَانِ وَمَنْ وَصَلَ الصَّفِ وَصَلَهُ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ قَطَعَ الصَّفِ قَطَعَهُ اللَّهِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith that we find in the Sunnah of Abi Dawood, and Shaykh al-Abdani, he authenticated. The Prophet sallallahu said, make your road straight. This is a command from the Prophet sallallahu So many times you will hear that when somebody is doing this, the brothers start laughing or smiling as if this is excessive. When the Prophet sallallahu he would command others in the rows to make sure the rows are straight, to make sure the gaps are closed. He would go through and push people's chests back if their chest was sticking too far out of the saf. So will Safufukum in the Tasweet of Safufim and Tamam Salah. This is a hadith of the Prophet in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah and it is Sahih. Straighten your rows. Straighten your rows. <clears throat> For straightening the rows is part of the completion of the Salah, the completion of the prayer. So in the first hadith we mentioned before, this last one, he said, make the rows straight. Stand shoulder to shoulder. Close the gaps. Be pliant in the hands of your brethren, meaning get close. Do not leave openings for the devil. Every gap is a way shaitan can come and interrupt your salah. And the shaitan alakum adu, fattakhiduhu adu. If you know he can come in your prayers, make a force, make a shield, get close to one another, block shaitan out of the prayers. It's already bad enough, he's flowing through the veins of Bani Adam. Do not let him in through any more than he needs to be. If any one of you joins a row that has a gap in it, Allah will join him up. But if anyone breaks a row, or leaves a space, or doesn't fill in a spot in a row so that it's void, then Allah will cut you off. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this is an issue that is very, very important. And this is why we continue to bring it to you. Anas ibn Malik, rahimahullah, anhu, he said that the Prophet said, أَقِيمُ صُفُوفُكُمْ فَإِنِّي أَرَاكُمْ مِنْ وَرَاءَ ظَهْرِي The Prophet said, straighten your, straighten your rows, 
because I see you from behind my back. Anas ibn Malik, one of the great companions, and this hadith is in Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Bukhari, he authenticated the rest of the narration from Anas. Anas said, وَكَانَ أَحَدُنَا يُرْزِقُ مَنْكِبُهُ بِمَنْكِبِ صَاحِبِهِ وَقَدَمَهُ بِقَدَمِهِ the rest of the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, Anas' verse, he continues, he says, and we, the companions, we stood shoulder, shoulder to shoulder. Yalziq, yani sticking it. Like you take something to something else. They used to stick themselves to one another. Shoulder to shoulder and ankle to ankle, foot to foot. In some narrations, knee to knee, this is how close they were. This is how the best of mankind the best generation of Sahaba, the, the, the companions, radiallahu anhu ardam, used to stand in salah. And Anas ibn Malik, and we mentioned that one that's straightening the lines, this is from the completion of the prayer. The prayer in Jama'ah, Ibn Umar, radiallahu anhuma, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Salatul Rajul fi Jama'atin tafdulu ala salatul Rajul wahdahu bi sab'in wa ishreena darajah. This hadith in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, and it is authentic and sahih, the Prophet he said, the prayer of a man in jama'ah, in congregation, in the masjid, is 70 times levels more virtuous than if you were to pray on your own. This masjid is open five prayers a day. Yet the rows, يعني, we get joy when we see the second row have people in it. And we should have easily three, four rows every salah. At least the ones at the ends of the day, Fajr and Isha. Prayer in the congregation, heavily stressed. Pray calmly. Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, he mentioned a man entered the masjid while the Messenger of Allah was sitting in one of the corners of the masjid. The man prayed and he came, he greeted the Prophet, he said, Assalamu alaikum. So the Prophet said, Wa alaikum assalam, he responded, and upon you be peace. He told him, Irja, go back and pray, you have not prayed. So the man did so. He came back and greeted the Prophet a second time. He told him, Irja, fasalli fi innaka lam tusalli, go back and pray, you have not prayed. Then a third time, he greeted the Prophet he said, Irja, fasalli fi innaka lam tusalli, go back and pray, for you have not prayed. So the man, he said to the Prophet kindly teach me how to pray. So the Prophet he said, إِذَا قُمْتَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَأَسْبِغِ الْغُضُورِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقْبِلِ الْقِبْلَةِ فَكَبِّرِ ثُمَّ أَقْرَأْ بِمَا تَيَسَّرَ مَعَكَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ ثم أركع حتى تطمئن راكعا ثم أرفع حتى تطمئن تستوي قائما ثم أشكر حتى تطمئن ساجدا ثم أجلس حتى تطمئن جالسا ثم أشكر حتى تطمئن ساجدا ثم أجلس حتى تطمئن جالسا ثم أرفع حتى تطمئن جالسا ثم أفعل ذلك في صلاتك كلها وقال أبو أمامة Abu Usama, Afwan, fil akhir, hatta tastawiya qa'ima. The Prophet ﷺ, then he went to teach the man the prayer. He said, when you stand up for prayer, make the wudu properly according to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Then face the qibla. Face the qibla, and this is min shurut salah from the conditions of the prayer that you face the qibla. Then say takbir, say Allahu Akbar. Recite what you know from the Qur'an. Then go into ruku'ah until you're sure your body is in ruku' and your bones have settled and you are calm there. Then stand up from ruku' until you're sure your bones have settled and you've stood up right and your back is straight. And then you say you, yani, what is from the sunnah to say. Then you go into sajda until your bones have settled and you're calm and you're in tranquility and you're in a position of, 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 of sedateness, feeling at ease in sajda. Then you sit up from sajda till your bones settle and you're in a position of ease. Then you make that second sajda till your bones settle and you're in a position of ease and calmness and tranquility. Then you sit up again till you're in a position of ease and calmness in that position and do so for the rest of the prayer. Abu Usami, he added, until you're standing up straight. Until you're standing up straight. He added this. And this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. The prayer from its etiquette, whether at home or in the masjid. But when you're here, you're from the guests of Rahman. You're the guests of the Most Merciful. Why do we rush the prayer? If it's not that important to us, why are we, why, why, why are we there? What are we doing? This is a communication between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're glorifying Him, praising Him, asking Him for guidance, asking Him for forgiveness. 
You should pray with sedateness and calmness in all the actions of the prayer. And this is a khutbah in and of itself. أقول قال هذا وصفر الله لي ولكم أدعو الله يغفر لكم ذنوب. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. Uh, my dear brothers in Islam, if you can move forward so those who are coming in have a place to pray to Raqqa'as before you sit down and then sit down to for the remaining of the khutbah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, you might think some of these things are trivial. Nothing in this deen is trivial. The more you do according to the Quran and the Sunnah, the more reward you get. The greater your chances of having Allah's mercy bestowed upon you for you to make it to Jannah. Do not belittle any of these things. In this narration, it mentioned the wudu. It mentioned the evolution. And Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "Ya ayyuh al-ladina amnu, ida kuntum ila salati, fa'sulu wajuhukum wa aydiyukum ila al-marafat, wa amsihu bi ra'usukum wa arjulukum ila ila al-kaabin." Allah says, "What well, means in this ayah, in Surah Al-Ma'ada, ayah number six? He says, "O oh, you who believe, when you intend to offer the prayer, wash your faces, wash your hands." Your hands, the palms, the back of them, up to the forearms and past the forearms, past the elbows. Rub wet hands over your head and wash your feet up to the ankles. Abu Hayya, he narrated, he said, I saw Ali radiallahu anhu performing wudu. He said, he washed his hands until he cleansed them. Then he washed his mouth and his nose three times. The washing of the mouth must include a madmada. It must include a swishing of the water in the mouth. These are all mistakes that are not, these are all things not being done. And the wudu then is invalid. And this is the key to salah. And salah is the key to jannah. So we have to know these things. So he said he would wash his mouth and nose three times. With the nose, a brother was telling me he was taught you just put water to the tip of the nose. This is wrong. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Increase the excessive in sniffing the water up your nose unless you're fasting. And he said this is the way he was taught. This is the key to Salah, the Salah, the key to Jannah. We have to know the Sunnah. So he said he washed his mouth and his nose three times. Then he washed his face three times. Washing the face means you take water and you splash your face. You don't just use wet hands. The face, the hairline, to under the chin, ear to ear, all of this must be wet with wet hands. Yeah, and you take the water and you splash it on the face and you move the hands to massage all the areas of the face. Then he wiped, uh, the aquan, then he washed his hands and his forearms three times. It is at this point in the wudu that washing the palm, the back of the palm between the fingers around the nails, that it's a compulsory, that you have to do it. It's not the time in the beginning when you wash your hands. It is at this time, yet many people at this point in the world, they just wash their forearm. It must include the front and the back of the hand between the fingers past the elbow. Again, washing. You can't take the wet hand and wipe it. It has to run under water. Or you have to have water cupped in your hands and let it spill down your arms. Then he would wipe his head from the front to the back and then wipe his ears because the Prophet said the ears are part of the head. This is a wiping. You're not taking... A, a chunk of water and pouring it on your head. You're taking wet hands, then he would wash his feet. Again, water has to flow on the feet, not just using wet hands. Water must flow on the feet. And then you massage it around and you get between your toes with your pinky and you go past the kabin, the two ankles, on the bones on the side of the foot. He said, I wanted to show you how Allah's Messenger وسلم, purified himself. The minimum these can be done is once. And we have to mention the wudu here because we are mentioning other hadith and we have to mention it and maybe we'll do a whole khutbah about it. The Prophet ﷺ, once he was behind the companions on a journey and he came to them when they were making wudu and they were just taking wet hands to wipe their feet. So the Prophet ﷺ said, وَيْلٌ لِلْعَقَابِ مِنَ النَّارِ وَيْلٌ لِلْعَقَابِ مِنَ النَّارِ وَيْلٌ لِلْعَقَابِ مِنَ النَّارِ he said, Woe, he said, save your heels from the hellfire. Save your heels from the hellfire. Save your heels from the hellfire. Two or three times it was mentioned in the hadith. What was this from? It was from them not washing their feet properly. 
So wash your feet properly. What says to wash? The face, the mouth, the nose, the hands and the arms past the elbows, the feet past the ankle bones. These need to be washed. Water must flow on them. From the etiquettes of the masjid following the imam, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما الإمام يؤتم به فإذا كبر فكبر وإذا قرأ فأنصته رواه النساء من الحديث الصحيح. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said the Imam is appointed to be followed. Only after he says takbir do you say takbir. Only after he starts to say amin do you say amin. Only after he gives taslim to exit the salat then you give taslim. Do not go in front of the Imam. And when he recites, then be silent and listen to the recitation, except for the Fatiha. You read this behind the Imam shortly, like by, by following him by a couple of words. Reciting the Amin out loud. Qala Rasulullah pray as you have seen me praying. The Prophet said, إِذَا أَمَّنَ الْإِمَامِ فَأَمِّنُوا فَإِنُّهُ مَنْ وَافَقَ تَأْمِينُهُ تَأْمِينَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ وقال ابن شهاب وكان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول آمين. The Prophet صلى said when the Imam says آمين, then all of you should say آمين out loud. This hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. Again, are we going to fight the Sunnah because of what we may have been taught by somebody else, even if he had a degree or a name or a title? When these are hadith on Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim and other narrations, the Prophet صلى الله عليه said when the Imam says آمين, then you say آمين. After him, do not start before him. And if one of you, you say the Amin, and it coincides with the angel's Amin, then all of your previous minor sins will be forgiven. Look at the reward. Yet some, because of what they may have been taught, or because of ignorance, will refuse to say it. Get out of that state of jahiliyyah. Get out of that state of ignorance. Follow the sunnah as it was revealed. It was narrated from uh, Afwan ibn Shihab. He said Allah's Messenger himself as the Imam would say Amin out loud. He would say the Amin. So don't we want to follow the best of mankind? Abdul Jabbar ibn Wa'al, he said that his father said, I prayed behind the Messenger of Allah وسلم, when he started to pray. And he said the takbir and he raised his hands to the level of his ears with his palms facing the qibla. Then he recited the opening of the book, and when he finished, he said, Amin, and he raised his voice with that Amin. يَرْفَعُ بِهَا صَوْتَهُمْ ثُمَّ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَا حَسَدَتْ مَا حَسَدَتْ مَا حَسَدَتْكُمْ الْيَهُودِ عَلَى شَيْءٍ مَا حَسَدَتْكُمْ عَلَى السَّلَامُ وَالتَّأْمِينَ رواه ابن ماجه وهذا حديث صحيح. The Jews, they do not envy you for anything more than they envy your salams with one another. This is why we should always greet each other with salam alaykum. Not our other marhaba, uh, you know, Allah hafiz and all these other things. You say that afterwards. Tahiyyat al-Islam, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is how we greet each other as Muslims. The Jews will not envy you more than they envy this salam that we have between one another. And the ameen that we say after the fatiha and after we make dua. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Lastly, we'll mention quickly, it was narrated by Abu Abdul Rahman. He said, Sami'atu Ali radiallahu anhu yaqul, anna qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna al-abd, idha jalasa fi musallahu, musallahu, ba'da salah, sallat alayhim malaika, wa salatuhum alayhi, Allahumma khillahu, Allahumma arhamhu, wa inna jalasa, yam qamil salah, sallat alayhim malaika, wa salatuhum alayhi, Allahumma khillahu, Allahumma arhamhu. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in this hadith, which is hasan due to corroborating evidence in the Muslim Imam Ahmad and other many narrations, the Prophet ﷺ said, when a person sits where he is praying, and he has, does not lose his wudu after, so he sits in the pray, place he prayed, and he does not lose his wudu or get up, the angels will send blessings on him, and they will say, O oh Allah, forgive him, O oh Allah, have mercy on him. And the same goes for after, before, if he sits waiting for the prayer. The angels send their blessings upon him. And their blessings upon him are, O oh Allah, forgive him. O oh Allah, have mercy on him. So when you come waiting for the prayer, the angels are making dua for you. After the salah, don't worry about talking to people. Don't worry about getting up and leaving. If you don't, if you don't have anything urgent, sit, make dhikr, make dhikr. The angels are saying, O oh Allah, forgive him. O oh Allah, have mercy on him. 
and who does not need extra dua, extra supplications for blessings to be sent upon us. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, many narrations, many etiquettes for us to govern how we pray, how we <clears throat> come to the masjid, how we interact with one another, things that can get us extra reward, save us from being punished, get us Allah's mercy, get us Allah's blessings. But we need to go back, we need to implement this Qur'an, we need to implement this sunnah of the best of mankind, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then Allah will grant us success, ibn Allah ta'ala. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك انت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على اعدائك وعداء الدين اللهم انصر اخواننا واخواتنا في فلسطين وفي كل مكان اللهم ثبت اقدامهم ونفس قلوبهم وارحم موتاهم واشف مرضاهم وتقبل شهداءهم يا ارحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين